Alright, welcome to lesson 2 of the VHDL tutorial. Uh, today we're going to talk about signals, vectors, and some basic control logic. We'll also go over the process statement and what it can do for you. So here we are in Quartus again, and we're going to start doing some interesting stuff as opposed to those little examples that we did before where it was just a couple of lines and we didn't really do anything interesting. So, let's start out with an input pin. And this is going to represent our input to the system. Now, what we did before is uh, create an input pin that had just one line coming in. This one, we're not going to do that. We're going to create what's called a bus. So I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call it input. And we're going to make it, say, a 32-bit bus. So I'm going to take 31 dot dot zero. And what that does is that means that this input pin is now 32 bits wide. It goes from bit 31 down to zero. And if you want to rename it the other way, zero to 31, you can do that as well. Once we have that, we can then use this tool right here, the orthogonal bus tool, once again. It's uh, right below the node tool, so it's a little bit thicker line. And this represents a bus, a big group of wires coming off of this input pin right here. And what you can do with that, if you want, is you can pull off little pins using the other tool, and you can name them. Say I want to get just the first line. Well, I right-click on it, and I go to Properties, and I say... Oops. Input 16. Say I want the 16th, the 17th bit. So I say that, say that, and then I'm done. Now this line will be just the 17th bit off of this input line right here. And if I want, I actually don't have to have them physically connected. I can delete them like that, and it'll still work just fine. If you want to name this line right here to something as well, we'll call it line one dot dot zero. You can do that as well. Just remember that everything that references this line, uh, or everything that's going to use this line needs to be referenced the same way. So this guy right here would also have to be line. Okay, so that's pretty cool, because what we can do now is we can start pulling off buses that we need. So if we have a whole bunch of information on this line, but we only want a couple of the bits off of it, we just have to create another line for it and call it a day. So that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm creating another line. I'm naming it line, and this will be 3 down to 0, because we're going to build a decoder. And we only want four bits, because we're going to do a 4 to 16 decoder, um, which is something similar to what you'll see later on in the labs when you guys build a 3 to 8 using uh, schematic capture only. But we're going to do it in VHDL. It'll actually be faster, um, and it'll save you a little bit of time down the road if you want to go that route. Okay, so now that we've pulled lines off of our bus here, let's go and talk about creating the VHDL. So, let's have some fun. <laughs> Here you can see I've already started creating it earlier, just playing around. Um, so we're going to create vector fun. And we're going to give it a port. Port, again, is a, what the uh, program will use to represent your object. So we're going to give it inputs and outputs. So for this one, instead of just giving it uh, one letter for each individual line that's coming in, we're going to give it a whole line here. So we'll say we have our big everything in line. So this is in, it's going to be standard logic, and we're going to be 4 down to, excuse me, 3 down to 0. We're 4 bits wide here. So we have a 4-bit bus, and the two dashes are comments in, in a VHDL. So after we have everything in, we're going to want to create some output lines, and since this is a, a 4 to 16 decoder, we're going to have to create 16 lines here. So we'll just call this 01 out and it can be a bit actually we'll do std logic doesn't make a ton of difference um, but it can down the road two and let's start doing the old copy and paste and again case sensitivity is important for those who are paying attention which means that I will have to delete it and do this the smart way <laughs> So you can see here that I'm creating one out for each in, and we're also going to do something smarter here in a little bit and create another output bus for it as well. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. sixteen of them there now. That's a lot of work, isn't it? So we don't really want to go this route. It's kind of a pain in the butt to name every single output vector here. So instead of that, we'll also create this guy out all. 
and he will be an out standard logic and he will be a 15 down to 0. And again, when you're uh, doing the last object in your port, you don't give him that semicolon, you put it here at the end. So, oops, it is right there. And now we have to end our entity, so we're going to end vector fun. I know it's sad, you don't want to end, but we have to today. Okay, so we're going to continue on. Now we need to define the behavior of this guy. What's he going to do? So again, to start defining the behavior of him, we have to use the architecture keyword. So architecture of vector fun is, and we must begin. <laughs> Actually, before we begin, let's talk a little bit about signals. Um, whenever you're assigning something in Cordis to a, a wire, let's say I want to assign my input to my output. So let's say I have something called just in, or in one because Cordis thinks that's a special keyword, and I want to I want to put him on an output. Let's call it out one, or just use the O one from up here. So normally to assign something like that, I would just say this. But let's say that I want to use that value later on. Like maybe I want to concatenate it with something, or I want to do some special operations on it, or I just want to say it's the greatest thing ever and put it on everything. Well, you can't use out1. So if I had another output, say out2, and I wanted to do something with out1, say I want to concatenate him with in1, and the ampersand is the concatenation in Cordis, this is bad. Bad. It won't work. And the reason that is is because what happens in VHDL, and this is how it's a little bit different from your normal programming languages, these aren't variables in the strictest sense. This output is strictly for outputting information. It cannot have anything input. So what's happening here is this side of it is treating it as an input. It's saying I'm using the value that's currently on out1, which is an output only pin, and I'm trying to assign it to output2. So Cordis will throw a hissy fit, and you'll be trying to break the idea behind VHDL, which is a hardware descriptor language. So in other words, if you have an input, you can have an output. But you can't have an output pretending that it's also an input in this block right here. Confused yet? Okay, well, we'll work it out as we go along. But the bottom line is is that once you assign something to an output, you cannot then use that output later on. Which kind of begs the question, so uh, how do we assign anything that needs to be a variable? Kind of a pain in the butt if we have to constantly do the same operation over and over and over again, right? Well, that's where these guys come along, and it's a cool keyword called signal. And a signal is a uh, you can think of it as an internal variable to the object itself. So in this case, uh, the signal can be written to and rewritten to as many times as you want. So in our case, let's define signal, my cool signal, because our signals are cool like that. And it's just like it was up there um, in the port. So again, we just do a semicolon, and we say that it's going to be a standard logic vector. And we can make it as big or as little as we want. So we'll make him a 4-bit bus again. So 3 down to 0. And we can have another signal. This will be our output signal. And he's going to be a standard logic vector. Having a tough time typing tonight. <laughs> He's going to match our output for all over there, so he'll be 15 down to 0, or a 16-bit bus. Okay, so that's one cool thing that we can do here in this architecture block, is create these signals that we can then play around with. But another thing that we can do is we can create constants. So a constant is basically just what it sounds like. It's great for using comparisons later on and renaming things. So I'm going to create a constant, and I'm going to call him easy recognition, or just easy rec. And he's going to be a standard. Oops, he's going to be a standard logic vector as well. And he's going to be three down to zero because we're going to use him to compare to what's coming in later on. And then right here, we're going to do the assignment. So this is the assignment operator for a constant and for a signal. Um, normally, you'll use uh, a different assignment operator, but for in here in the vector, or excuse me, in the architecture block, for just constants, this is what you're going to use to initialize things at the very beginning. Um, otherwise, um, this won't come into play. So we're going to make him be uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. He's pretty exciting, isn't he? And if we want to be really explicit about it, we can also say 
B because uh, it's a binary value. So this will be exactly 0, 0, 0, 0. If I want to put a hex value on him instead, I could say X and then I could say 0, 0. So that's the same amount of um, bits right there. It's just that X is hexadecimal, B is binary, and if you leave it just as it is with a bunch of zeros, it'll try to interpret it and figure out what's the best assignment for it. Okay, so let's move on. Alright, now we're here in the begin block. And in the begin block we can either uh, do like we did before where we started assigning things. So I could say out, out 1 is equal to say the first pin on everything in. So everything in and then to say which pin I want to use, I could use the zeroth pin right there. So that'll just assign everything in zero to my out one pin all the time, no matter what's going on. When you start building more advanced components, you'll put things like clocks on them and uh, latches and things that keep data from flowing back and forth all the time. When you're modeling that in VHDL, you might not want to have everything coming in all the time. So that's where we start using a, a new guy right here, and he's going to be the process statement. So if we have a process, um, it's, this is where it's going to start executing sequentially, so things aren't just going to be assigned automatically 100% of the time, no matter what. So in order to get into that, again, we create this word here called process, and now we have to define what our process is sensitive to. Do we care about a clock? Do we care about what's coming in? Do we care that the sun is shining? All these different things. <laughs> um, but we're going to tell it to what it's going to care about right now. So this process, is we only have one input, so we'll just care about that input. So we're going to care about everything in... And if you want, you can specify which pins on everything in you want it to care about. If you only wanted the first two pins, you could say 1 down to 0. At that point, it's only going to care about the first two pins. But for our case, we want to care about everything that's happening on that. And again, you have to say begin once you create a process. These are just keywords for Cordis. So now we have uh, our process here, and things can execute sequentially within this process. So. If we want to play around with our vectors first for a little bit, we can have a little bit of fun. So let's say that we want to dump the first two bits of everything in onto out all. This is just to show you, for example, I'm going to delete it and then go from there. But for now, we're going to put first two bits of everything in onto out all. So I can do that by saying out all, and I'll make it... Uh, let's make it the last two bits on out all, just for fun's sake, right? So I can say 15 down to 14 and I can assign him right here. So he's everything in. And we're going to make him 1 down to 0. Pretty easy, right? Let's say that I also want to tack on a couple more bits. Okay, so let's make it the first four bits now. Okay, so 15 down to 11. And uh, we're going we're gonna to reverse the last two bits and everything in. So, okay, so I'll concatenate right there, and I'll say everything in, and I'll make him the last bit, so he'll be three, oops, excuse me, and everything in, two. And again, you can do the down twos again if you want to um, have ranges. So now what we've got going on is the uh, first couple bits of out all are going to be the first two bits of everything in, followed by the last bit, followed by the second to last bit. Why you would want to do this? Well, sometimes when you're uh, putting a bus into your component, you might get lines that are all sorts of wacky orders, and you might not want those orders for what you're using here, um, simply because it simplifies everything for you. So if you need to move stuff around, you can certainly do that. If you want to make your life a little bit simpler, uh, we can start using signals. So let's start using them. So let's say that our 4-bit our bus here is in the wrong order. It's uh, got the biggest character in the first position and the smallest character in the last position. In other words, if I write this number right here, that's actually saying it's 8 in binary, which is not what we're used to. We're used to seeing it more like this. So that would be 8 in our normal way of thinking about it. So we need to reverse our bus. So we're going to take my cool signal here, and we're going to assign him the bus. So we're going to say everything in, and we're just going to do it backwards. So we're just going to say 0, 2, 3. 
that's an easy way of doing it. And uh, I didn't leave the down to here. Um, it's just kind of assumed, but if you want to be explicit about it, you should be um, for good coding practices.